What's going on YouTube? Promads here. Welcome back to more Vampire Walkthrough I'm doing. See now I'm in his actual mansion now. I'm on finally another district. I've got to go see the Ascon Club. I'm going to his trust. Okay. That's the play, I think. Fucking stamina, man. Every time. Come on. How are you still alive? The Ascalon Club. The heart of British vampire society. Not quite as subtle as I expected. Let's go for it, guys. <laughs> Do you know where you are standing right now? In front okay. of the Ascalon Club, I presume. The Ascalon Club only summons or ostracizes. What is your business tonight? I received an invitation. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Please proceed. Lord Redgrave is waiting on you upstairs. There has been quite a battle here. Well, the place on here. I'm sure the Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. My good friends, if I may have your attention. Behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bansha was no match for him. Here, here, here! Come forward, young Ekon, for we have so much to discuss. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, 
Earl of Bristol and chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I've been eager to make your acquaintance. I've heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Ashbury expressed your wish to meet me. Yes. The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. Is she a good friend of yours? She's a close friend, and I'm honored that she feels the same about me. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too fickle when it comes to important decisions. My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Ashbury. Of course not, and I praise your loyalty. Would you offer the same fidelity to the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of this skull plague that threatens London and the country. You have been on the front line in the East End, but the time has come to open up a second front here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain, but we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Why do you suddenly need me? The Ascalon Club only recruits the best, and you definitely fit the bill. Your scientific and medical reputation alone would qualify you as a candidate. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah, straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Dr. Reed. But first, I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? No, I haven't. Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club, and to serve me as such. Before I accept, I have so many questions. Please ask. What is the Ascalon Club's express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean? Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly. William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. Well, you'd killed him, I guess. What does it mean to be a member of the Ascalon Club? It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire. But the true nature of its members remains a secret. Am I supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members. And I do appreciate obedience. I killed Fergal who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all Skulls. Will his death be an issue? Do not worry. My priorities have changed. Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. 
I agree to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. I've got to fight someone. My fellow members, dear friends, please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. Is he worthy? Is his blood pure? Well, speak, Dr. Reed. In front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall. Speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? Yes, I will. Then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic, but England's traditions are the backbone of our nation. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Doctor. Take your place among the bearers of the lance. One of us! One of us! Shall chase these Good evening, out. Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Figuratively. I feel perfectly fine. Do I have cause for concern? Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. So he's human. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Are you a member of the club? Yes, I am. And I have been for many years. And will be until the day I die. What can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member. And a dying one at that. Are you sick? Personally, I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir, it's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must admit, this one is my favorite. Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. Mr. Uh -huh. Dawson, of Dawson and Dawson, the wealthiest man in England. 
It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. What do you know about the Guard of Prewen? I should not say this, but I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. But they are our enemies. They are not mine, Dr. Reed. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods. But brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. What is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. A formidable, unscalable wall to isolate the deserving from the infected masses. By doing so, you would create two separate ghettos. What if the disease gets past the wall? The results would be disastrous. Not if we eliminate all suspected cases of infection as soon as they appear. A necessary sacrifice. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? Removed from all mortal concerns? Decisiveness is what the city needs, and it needs it now. That went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale, especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was, though very long ago. Well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I, Lance Spera. I'm listening, my lord. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic. And your findings were quite alarming. Do you know Edgar Swansea? Not personally, but I've been told he has some sort of immortal fetish and is a good friend of yours. Does it bother you that I consider him my good friend? As long as you reveal nothing of the club's inner workings, why should I forbid you engaging in conversation with the good Dr. Swansea? You are spying on me. Not personally. I rarely leave this building. But once he found you, Fergal kept me informed. Until you put an end to his mission. Who was Fergal? I don't see him sipping tea with the others in the club. Fergal Banshaw was my squire of sorts. Even before becoming that magnificent beast, he was a brute. He served me well for decades. No, I mean, what was he? He was clearly no ordinary vampire. No, he was a Volkod. All muscles and instinct. Quite the rare breed. Ferociously territorial. Mortals often mistake them for werewolves. 
You do know I killed him? Yes. Will you bear ill will towards me for his death? Of course not. Your victory was quite impressive and courageous. You earned my respect. Fair enough. Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed. But for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the Skulls. I don't know, trust and I. Skulls are malevolent and disgusting creatures. I knew I was right to induct you, Dr. Reed. You would not dare lie to me on such a vital topic now, would you? So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club, and you have carte blanche. Interrogate the locals, follow all the leads you find, and get results. Me to use all my medical knowledge to pinpoint and stuff all the possible sources of infection in the West End. He seems very worried that the epidemic might spread while fear borrows. London. Foster raising the chances chance of infecting Britain's elite. They will attempt to root out the cause of infection. I believe I should start by interrogating all the local inhabitants I find to gather all possible information about any unusual activity. Related to the epidemic in the vicinity. One of four, nice. How is your investigation going, Dr. Reed? Time is our enemy. I have a few questions for your lordship. All right, but be quick. What can you tell me about the Great Hunt? It's a major concern, and I'm convinced we'll only get a satisfactory conclusion by putting an end to the epidemic. I have already met Geoffrey McCullum. I'm certain he will persist until he has killed every last vampire. The Guard's current successful recruitment campaign is driven by the ravenous behavior of the Skulls. I see. So without the epidemic creating Skulls, the Guard could not convince anybody of our presence. Exactly. Once we have put the epidemic behind us, we need only wait until the Guard grows old and weak. Time will once again become our ally. What about the risk of a full-scale attack here? Geoffrey McCullum is a daring leader. That is exactly why so many of our number have left the country until things improve. But not me. I founded this club. I'll die defending it. I respect that. You made me swear on the blood of William Marshall during my initiation ceremony. Why was that? William Marshall was the most glorious knight who ever lived. He served five kings, and was a living example of probity for all. And he was my maker. William Marshall was a vampire? Is this some sort of joke? Wait. 
Could he be my maker? That would be joyful news. For it would mean he still walks among us. But alas, the great knight has left this world for good. Why is his blood so sacred to the Ascalon Club? He was simply the greatest defender of the realm we have ever known. I fought by his side at the Battle of Preston, and he made me his progeny following the fight. May I ask you about the mortal who attended my initiation? Mr. Aloysius Dawson. A member of the club does not normally ask questions about other members. We trust each other mutually. So he really is a member then? Indeed. Only the most eminent members are allowed to attend such ceremonies. Even if I admit some of us fled during the first hours of the Great Hunt. But Mr. Dawson is mortal. Are you not afraid he might reveal who you are? especially to your enemies. Aloysius Dawson is a man of his word, as are all of us. This is the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. We do not grant access to the unworthy. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Godspeed, Dr. Reed. We are counting on you. This is an outrage. We shall chase these intruders down. I was chased by a gigantic falcon. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Doctor. What's that? <laughs> Mac, come here. Come, come, come. Got that? Nan's gone out. No point in just waiting, sitting at the door waiting for Nan. She's gone out. Megan's out the door waiting for Nan, because Nan's gone out. For a bit. She misses her Nan, don't you, girl? Nanny! Where's Nan? She's coming! Excuse me. Who's that? It does have a long loading screen, doesn't it? Well, I guess so eventually. <laughs> I normally just skip that and record him. Stop recording and just wait. And start recording when it comes back up again. Instead of just sitting there. But as you guys can skip it though, that's one thing. I think Lord Redgrave just suggested I was sired by an ancient vampire. Good evening, sir. May I have your attention, please? Come on, Johnny. Don't you recognize your oldest friend? Clarence. Clarence Crossley. How are you? My God. So you survived the war too. So sorry I didn't recognize you at first. I almost didn't recognize you either. War does that to men, I heard. In my case, it was true. For I witnessed the horror that lies underneath. When did you escape the war and return to London? You know what's funny? I almost never think about the war. Not anymore. I'm involved in another kind of battle now. I know what you mean. I haven't had much time to think about the war either since my return. Of course. The epidemic, I bet you've been busy as well. Forgive me, Johnny. I I didn't want to sound selfish. What is this new battle? Well, I saw terrible things during the war. 
horrors I thought I'd forget. They're here too. They're everywhere. Vampires. How is your wife, Venus? We've spent so much time away from each other. So many things have happened. But you're alive. You returned in one piece and you have a family. How many soldiers can say the same? Believe me, it's not quite that simple. Unlike you, I'm not the man I used to be. Is everything all right at home? Surely Venus was relieved to see you return from France in one piece. Have you forgot what people are like in this part of town, Johnny? Venus fears for our family reputation. Now her husband has become the village idiot. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. If you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Malanies. Yes? What about the Malanies? What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. What is going on in there? You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Good evening, miss. Oh my god, no. Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. Wait, no. Why do you think I would... What? Don't worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Echons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> what do you think about this part of town? I was raised here, and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in a dark alley at night? You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh, are you blushing, Dr. Reed? <laughs> Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste. Even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true, may I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich. I suppose you're right. But society must reform and renew itself or we are all done for. Oh, and her, uh, because she's... I guess not us, so. Tell me about your adoption. What do you want to know? How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me. And I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct word is Ekon, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. She told me everything when I turned 16. Though I suspected the truth for a long time before that. Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. 
She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion, but I have my own house now. I have a life to live, you see. And one day, I'll have my death to face. What are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night, since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? That's true. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning, I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. Are you a suffragette? Oh, you really are, Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time, even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh, now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously. And the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? What your mother is? Why should it? My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? Of course not. You have nothing to fear from me. Or your mother. Good to know. And don't worry, my mother told me everything I need to know about vampire tricks. Their nature as well as features. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. Oh. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullaney's. A nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Do you know why Lady Asprey chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. Good evening, sir. 
Please forgive me for disturbing you. I'm a doctor. I never judge a man by his title, but by his attitude. And you are not disturbing me at all. I am Calhoun Russell, and I welcome you. Well, I must admit, it's good to receive a warm welcome for once. I'm Doctor. I'm Jonathan Reed. Welcome, Doctor Reed. Welcome to my humble shop. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? Not really. Wait, now that you mention it, I don't see the McPhersons in my favorite restaurants. They love delicate meals too, you understand? Thank you. It may be nothing, but I'll investigate anyway. Where do they live? They have a house in the southern part of the district, somewhere north of the railway bridge. There is a courtyard, if I remember rightly. How is the situation in this part of town? Life is good and peaceful. We're lucky to live in such an era of progress and wonders. Are you not concerned about the epidemic? Oh, I'm sure the authorities would take the appropriate measure if the danger were that high. You cannot expect the newspapers to expose the truth while the war is still raging. I can assure you that the situation here is desperate. Well, that's news then. But I can't believe that things are that bad. Are you sure you're not exaggerating a bit? For the thrill of it? What can you tell me about this place? I recently found the best steak and kidney pie in the city. I'd be glad to share the address if you want. I must confess, I have quite specific tastes when it comes to nutrition. Really? Well, I'm always happy to try new exotic meals. If you ever find an intriguing table, please share the address. Finding a good restaurant? Is that really all that interests you? Oh, I have many passions, but nothing brings me ecstasy like subtle and exquisite flavors from my teeth to my belly. Is it not a little too late to be trading? On the contrary, it is the perfect hour. Believe me, my friend, it is always at night that you meet the most fascinating characters. But what about the epidemic? The bombs and raids? And all the random violence? Please, sir. This is London, England. We will prevail. And if a bomb must fall on my shop, then I'll be there to hear it falling. So you prefer to work at night? Oh, I also enjoy a sunny day like everybody else. But the night always has a certain je ne sais quoi of its own. Do you have any family nearby? Not since my parents died. I'm London's lone gourmet. London's lone gourmet? What a strange title. I used that name in my early years when I was a food critic, and I kept it. Really? But you seem to be such a pleasant and sociable fellow. I'm afraid the real hedonist has to be sometimes. I discovered ecstasy as a solitary pleasure, but it does not mean it can't ever be shared. Do you need medical help? You would save my life, Dr. Reed. I have not felt so bad in many years. Don't worry. There is nothing serious to fear. I have seen far worse, I can assure you. I cannot imagine the pain these people must face, though. You have my gratitude, Doctor. This disease has ruined my appetite. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I'm sure you will take care of yourself.
Alright guys, I think that's what's going off. We meet again, Mr. Kimura, in a more peaceful situation. Dr. Reed, still visiting London by night? We must both be nocturnal animals, you and I. After your captivity, I thought you'd be more cautious. Breathing the cold night air helps calm my mind, sir. I've had the most frightening nightmare since I escaped that filthy jail. How is the situation in the West End? I've heard rumors about armed men patrolling and fighting infected citizens in these very streets. I was lucky they didn't shoot me when I was abducted. May I ask you what you do for a living, Mr. Kimura? I am... I was... a landlord. A wealthy one. And... not a very kind one, I realized recently. Why this sudden epiphany? Is it because of your near-death experience? I was already feeling nostalgic about Weymouth, my hometown. With recent events, I'm thinking about going back there. What can you tell me about your abduction? If you really want to know, I was locked in that building for three or four days. My jailer was insane, mumbling about sacrifice and voices. And why didn't he sacrifice you? That was the weirdest part. He claimed to spill blood was not enough. It had to be done when some stars were aligned. Which stars? That's the whole point. He wanted me to talk to him about some Red Queen configuration or constellation. I've never heard of such an astronomical term. Okay. What did he say about voices? He constantly whined about the voice of his master, ordering him to do terrible things. He wanted to silence the voice by offering blood. My blood. Why are you so nostalgic for your hometown, Tadao? I was focused so much on making money, I almost forgot that my relatives and friends are threatened by this epidemic. Have you heard anything from your family? I was not only a bad landlord, I was also a bad husband. I've not seen my wife and son for years. Busy, busy, busy. At least now you're ready to go back and see them. But don't be surprised if your son bears a grudge, sir. You make it sound like you suffered from an absent father yourself, Dr. Reed. Well, I'll keep your warning in mind. Have you no friends at all? Over the years, I'm afraid my greed turned me into my friend's adversary, while I became friends with my professional rivals. Those you grew up with didn't share your views on money and success. Would you believe I was once a member of poetry circles and an astronomy club? We were young, such joyful dreamers then. But I stopped laughing long ago. Can you change? And is it what you really want? 
If so, it must come from within, not without. I've seen what an altruistic gesture can do. Nothing forced you to save me, Dr. Reed, but you did. I will follow your example in these matters from now on. There is no need to thank me. Rescuing a London citizen should not be out of the ordinary. Though I'm afraid it may appear so in these difficult times. You did not only rescue me, you fought for me. You put your life in danger to save me. That's quite extraordinary. How will you cope if you're attacked again? I don't know. I've heard about these men and women who patrol the West End every night, chasing criminals like my abductor. Maybe I should join them. Tell me, Tadao, why was your abductor so interested in your passion for astronomy? I don't know. We met a few times at the Royal Greenwich Observatory. He seemed to share my hobby. Then he invited me to his house and locked me in. Yes, astronomy is a fascinating subject. When I was a child, my mother bought a small telescope for my sister and I. We spent many a pleasant evening stargazing. Stars are not just dots in the sky, Doctor. They are the key to our understanding of the cosmos. They remind us how insignificant we are. You're right. But children love magic and stories. I remember our mother told us constellations have the power to protect us. Protection by the light of the stars. That's sweet. You remember the name of these constellations? Pegasus. It was the constellation my mother liked the most. Memory's a strange thing. I can recite without hesitation the names of the 88 constellations, yet I barely remember my own childhood. Did he fake his interest in astronomy to get close to you? No. In his madness, he spoke about a blood sacrifice to be made to his master when the stars aligned to a specific configuration. Goodbye, Mr. Kimura. Take care. Maybe I should leave the city.
That building is under quarantine. Could this be what I'm looking for? Fuck me. <laughs> Fucking that stupid poison is ridiculous. Oh, I did go to that. Oh, what? That now and you little bastard. <laughs> I should use a rat stick now, but my health is back up, innit? Might as well. Oh, there's another one there. Oh, one of these fucking things again. I don't like them ones, man. They're annoying. 
Sometimes like you find yourself hitting them but you're dying for it. <laughs> what? Where was I? Yes, right. phase my rats. Be affected in there definitely. Shotgun. Come on! Oops. <laughs> Actually, I've got a shotgun. Um, I've got that mic handy. Oh! 
Ah! Oh, I told you to stop reloading for two seconds. I want to work and focus on the other, not hold on. Yeah, just block from there before you can get there. in the disease's evolution? <sighs> yeah, Gasping's kind of bloody annoyed. Not a lot, it is actually kind of annoyed. So the husband had an affair with Doris Fletcher. Oh. 
Oh, where did you come from? Whoa, where did you come from? I thought I killed it before. But it blocks like that, man. Get enough hurts for badly. I mean, you know, oh, for fuck's sake, that gas is annoying actually. That gas is stupid. I've got this fucking guy to deal with. It's like that gas. So smart now, are you, mate? <laughs> right. Um. Where's his safe house? Because I want to evolve. Walk work. There. I remember Sunday walks in the past. <laughs> oh, why is this bad? That's an evident. That's better everywhere. That more powerful to fair. How much is it? 3,000. Ooh, worth it. Only oh, number 10k. Ooh. If I kill the butler, I can do that one. <laughs> but no. Oh, no, level 26 required. I can't even do it anyway. It's locked.
I just got a cold. Hold on a sec. I need to get so I stuff a migraine. Yeah, but I don't know how to. I haven't figured that one out yet. I don't think I've figured it out yet. Oh, I've got a uh, stuff for gold. What's that? I'll walk off one just in case. Not that I ever really use it, but. Oh, I've got it now, finally. That one I use. This is all, yeah. Not great. Ooh, almost, pretty much, almost got enough to do it already. Increase damage up by 10%. Yeah, I'd rather just do this than no one. It's not much stamina really, is it? Oh, why did 24? Where's the butler? I'll just have it. Do you need medical attention, Avery? I won't refuse, sir. I don't feel that good these days. Here is your prescription. You'll feel better soon enough. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. I found an old letter written by my father and addressed to me. Do you know anything about it, Avon? Your father wanted me to give you this letter for your 35th birthday. But you left for the war, and the letter remained in his office. Until tonight. I realize now you knew my father better than I did. Do you know why he left, Avery? Did he ever speak to you about his departure? No, sir. Mr. Reed was not exactly forthcoming. Perhaps this letter will give you the information you require. Well, I had a quite read, read a letter actually. Uh, I never actually look into things like that. I'm currently investigating sources of the epidemic in this part of town. Do you know anything useful? Not really, except 
All the Macpherson's servants resigned a few days ago. They feared becoming infected, they said. The Macphersons? Where do they live? I think it's a rich house near the railway bridge in the southern part of the district. I think I'm one of those done. Thank you, Avery. We'll talk later. Your bedroom is ready as always. Good night, sir. Good night. Ah. Uh. I don't read the letter. Ah, oh, clearly. I think he lived that close to the vampire place. <laughs> Why are vampire hunters sniffing around here? I need to find out what they're after. No place for you, sir. Burn it! Well, no place for you, mate.
It's locked. This woman's body has multiple lacerations. They're deep, too. Whoever did this was driven by rage. Might be a wolf. He had his tongue removed and his eyes gouged out. He was a victim of brutal torture. Ouch. This one's neck is broken. He was young. Probably the sun. Alive. Well, bad. You killed your family. They mocked my talent. She's gonna shoot that shit at me, or he's gonna fight me. That gas thing's annoying. Oh, what? Wow. <laughs> it's kind of funny actually, though, but it's stupid.
Oh fuck's sake, man. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, so I've got to fight her again, have I? Okay. No, I haven't got fire. Okay, I actually saved it. <laughs> so I killed her, but I died in the process, so. And then I was reborn. Okay. <laughs> That's quite funny, actually. So, oh, this girl took lessons at the famous Doris Fletcher acting school. Ah, oh, no, I'm not talking about this. Okay, it's a bit of a word there to be honest, but okay. Doris Fletcher seems to be the missing link here. It can't just be a coincidence. I should go to her acting school.
is despicable. I can't believe I'm doing this. I have this thirst for blood. I like faster than a vampire, I don't know. It's annoying though, because when you're fighting the big ones, the little ones always hit you with fire. But when you go to them, they don't do anything. They're just always hitting in the back. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Reed. A great night, what? I may have a look at your goods, Mr. Russell.
Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. I cannot enter. Ugh! 
There's an open window on the second floor. I should be able to get in through that. Well, that's how you get through there then. In front of you stands the tall queen. You can but lower your head, fit only to smirk at her soiled feet. Can that be Doris Fletcher's voice? Where does it come from? I really must remember that when they explode. And all of them might do that, so it's hard, sometimes it's hard to notice unless they physically spray you over.
queen again. She only learned vocal things. For in front of you stands the tall queen. It's like our boss fight, I think. You can but lower your head. Here we go. If it only to smirk at her soil. I'm doing this. Dead enter my realm. Are you here to worship or mock me? I'm here to put an end to the vampire epidemic, Miss Fletcher. Ah, but Doris Fletcher is no more. She was consumed by this putrid flesh that now enshrouds her. You feel anger for what happened to you, but I can help you. I'm a doctor. Doris Fletcher is no more. All that remains are the dreams of the queen she was and the queen she'll be. Until then, all shall die, for that was her final wish. You killed my hear and obey. For your queen commands you! Attack! Ha! Whoa, I'm 
Wow. <laughs> Okay, it's done quickly. Right, let's get first done quickly. Should take too long. To be fair. Why is it always start you have like, a low blood when you die? You killed my father! Prepare your hand is shaking. Maybe I'm about killed your father. Oh, I smell your fear. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> I don't know what it's worse. Yeah, I do. Wait. I beg you, wait. What? I... I don't want to die. And I did not come to kill you, Miss Fletcher. Will you spare me then? Save this cadaverous carcass of mine. Does your heart 
beat a little faster now. You fancy me then, Doctor? No, Miss Fletcher. My dead heart will beat for only one. Ah! Is she pretty? Is she sweet and tender? To me, yes. Ah! Someone's in love with the uh, lady. I know. And this is partly why you must be destroyed. What you just said. That I did not come here to kill you, yes. But I realize now the threat you embody must be stopped. <gasps> Do I have to fight her again or something? Will you? You were Doris Fletcher, the greatest actress of her generation. No one can take that from you. Thank you. And farewell. Oh, ah! 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 way to go out. Farewell. Wow. Bravo! So dramatic. I love it. McCullum. How strange I seem to find you whenever I'm inquiring about that skull infestation. I mean you no harm. I'm not here for you. But once I put all the pieces of the puzzle together, I'm sure we'll have a little chat. You and me. Stay away from me, McCullum. You and all your war dogs. That I can't guarantee, Dr. Reed. But I'll let you go. For now. Oh, how about you go? I should probably leave the theatre right now. Oh, definitely stay, it's trophy. Have no fear, brother! The West End should be safe now, but London is not. It would be wise to benefit from the Ascalon's protection while I continue my research during the Great Hour. Do you want me to get a hard boss to defeat you, really? Ah, oh, long ass loading screens again. <laughs> So Dorothy it's just needed to be close to her audience to infect them. Contagion through skin. Very disturbing. Hmm. Huh. type of infection. Step away, sir. Stop now! Not even more to stop! Countries 
You may want to skip 5 seconds seconds into the video guys. Save you by sitting there waiting for a load on the screen. <laughs> Believe me, I wish I could do that. <laughs> Elizabeth, what are you doing here? I've been formally asked to witness your triumph, my dear. After all, isn't it the natural role of a woman to support her man in victory? But I'm it's you who insisted I join the Ascalon. Please forgive my giddiness. I'm just overcome by the thrill of finally being allowed within these hallowed halls. You certainly have an inquisitive mind. It's quite something. Elizabeth Ashbury, only you can make smile in these difficult And the same to you, Jonathan Reed. Now go have your little chat with the chairman. I can see he's practically bursting to hear your report. I wonder if it was her it was on about when he said Heart of Blanc to one. What's on there? Lord Finney. Where is he? Ah, there you are. Welcome back to the Ascalon Club, Lance Bearer. Please, tell us the good news. Have you put an end to the epidemic? My hypothesis was correct. Doris Fletcher was the source of the contagion in this part of town. She was probably the first to be infected. And you cleansed her before the hunters, I've been told. Well done, Dr. Reed. You thrust your lance and pierced the very heart of the corruption. I did my best. The important thing is, we won a major battle for the survival of London. For that, we salute you. Thank you, my lord. Now, I have another task for you. One of the utmost importance. Perhaps even more so than the previous. I'm listening. It's time for you to perform a most sacred duty for the club. I want you to recruit a new vampire. Recruit a new vampire? Are you sending me on some sort of diplomatic mission? Not exactly. I want you to make Aloysius Dawson the Ekon he deserves to be. Oh. What a turn him, as you wish. As you wish, my lord. Good. Now go. How would you like me to proceed? Aloysius is waiting for you at the Dawson estate. Once the deed is done, I'll join you there to celebrate this momentous occasion. Before I go, I have a few questions. All right. I'm listening. You invited Lady Ashbury. Wouldn't that be breaking one of your cardinal rules? No women allowed. Not allowed as members, no. But considering the circumstances, I thought you'd like to have her here to witness your triumph. Yes. So it's a temporary admittance. Then. Something of a bargain, considering the crisis. He would actually, because I think I can't even love each other. <laughs> Why Aloysius Dawson? Because he is about to die. And he just may be the most influential man in England. After me, of course. Oh. 
Does he know I'm coming? He can't wait to become your progeny, Dr. Reed. Especially now that you have shown how strong your lineage is through your sister. Did he choose me? No, I did. My decision is very recent, to say the least, but it is entirely mine. How would you like me to proceed? Don't worry. Aloysius has had many years to prepare himself. He has studied our kind for decades. So shall I just let him drink my blood? Yes. Aloysius will gratefully sup on your blood. His heart will slow, then stop. But he will rise again as one of us, an immortal. Is there any danger? Our blood alters a mortal body so deeply that some don't survive the metamorphosis. They die for good. But Mr. Dawson has been preparing himself for a long time. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Well, that's gonna be interesting. Turn us on, love. Are you all right, Jonathan? Lord Redgrave has just ordered me to turn Aloysius Dawson. To make him my progeny. I see. And how do you feel about this? I'd like your advice on the matter. The real question here is, why has his lordship given you this task? Do you think it's some sort of trap? Do you really want to know what I think about this? Yeah. Do, yes. To make an immortal of a soulless blackguard like Aloysius Dawson will only lead to a disaster for London. The man is already dead inside. Should I refuse? Perhaps politely suggest that Lord Redgrave turn the man into a vampire himself. Don't you dare, my dear. According to what I've recently discovered, his lordship could kill you for even broaching the subject. Really? Why? I've recently found proof that the Earl of Bristol is of lesser lineage and only capable of creating skulls. Please tell me more about your recent investigation. As long as you lower your voice. Are you sure your information about Redgrave is correct? He says he's the progeny of the great knight William Marshall, who lived some nine centuries ago. That's a lie. Lord Redgrave is unable to create anything but skulls, if the poor soul survive at all. How can you be sure the information was correct? I made the acquaintance of a most interesting informer while investigating your maker from whom I learned the truth about Lord Redgrave. Why so vindictive? You suddenly sound like you're angry. Forgive me, Jonathan. I hate myself for it, but I feel such pride in my discovery. I'm afraid I just can't help it. Which is? He did serve William Marshall. And yes, the blood he covets as a token does truly belong to that legendary knight. But he was never his progeny. His lineage is not so noble. What would you have me do about Dawson? The man is dangerous. Did you know he plans to build a wall to separate the healthy rich from the sickly poor? Do not make him your progeny. What would you do? The man's dying already. Let the Reaper harvest the rotten fruit that is his soul. What would happen if I made Dawson an Ekon like myself? You would add a powerful immortal into a suffering world. An immortal who already craves authority. Maybe I could teach him control, like you taught me. Lead him down the right path. Mr. Dawson spent his life searching for a way to cheat death. I'm sure he has spent decades dreaming of how he'd spend eternity as a tyrant. Goodbye for now, Elizabeth. Goodbye, my dear. Please, be careful. She thinks I shouldn't do it, and I shouldn't do it. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. 
you have. Like and subscribe below and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Peace out guys, take care.